Hello. So, we're about to read Parshas Vayikra. Well, not in shul, at home, hopefully. The Parsha begins, Vayikra el Moshe, and he called to Moshe. Vaydaber Hashem elav me'ohel mo'ed lemor. And Hashem spoke to him from the ohel mo'ed, from the tent of meeting, saying. So, Vayikra el Moshe appears to be superfluous. The Pasuk just could have said, Vayidaber Hashem el Moshe me'ohel mo'ed lemor. Hashem spoke to Moshe from the tent of meeting, saying. So what's this Vayikra el Moshe? He called to Moshe. So there's a uh, medrash in Vayikra Rabba that, that goes as follows. Vayikra el Moshe Vayidaber, the implicit question, why calling and then speaking? Mikan Chachomim. From here the sages said, Kol tamid chacham she'embo da'as nevela tovam himenu. Any time a chacham that does not have da'as, da'as is understanding. A dead body is better than he is. Tzeyu lamad mimosha, go and learn from Moshe. Avia chachma avia neviim, the father of wisdom, the father of the prophets, Shahotzi es Yisrael Mitzrayim, who took the Jews out of Egypt, Valyodona Asu Kama Nisimuniflos, and through him were performed many miracles and wonders, Al Yamsuf on the Sea of Reeds, Vaolishme Morom, and he went up to the heavens, Vahorid Torah Minashamayim, and he brought down Torah from the heavens. Venis Asek Bumlachas and Mishkan, and he was engaged in the work of the tabernacle of the Mishkan. Velo Nichnas Lifnai Vilifnim Ad Shakorolo, but he yet he still did not go into the Ohamoid until God called him. Shinemar Vaikra Moshe, as it says, and he called to Moshe. So it's implicit from this Mishnah, excuse me, from this Medrash, is that the Kriya is essential. It's a preface to the speaking. And it's specifically concerning the Ohel Moed. The Medrash is telling us that Moshe, who of any person on the face of the earth could have had claim to some level of familiarity with the Almighty, and he could have gone into God's house, as it were, the Ohel Moed, without first being called, he still didn't enter until he was called. <clears throat> Reverend Cutler observes that this isn't simply speaking about the greatness of Moshe, but it's also talking about the importance of derech eretz, of proper conduct, as an essential element of Torah. Now we know that Chazal say Derech Eretz Kodma the Torah. Derech Eretz precedes Torah. But why, says Rabbi Cutler, why is it that Nevela Tova Hemenu, that a dead body is better than a Tamar Chacham doesn't have Derech Eretz? You might think, okay, Tamar Chacham doesn't have Derech Eretz. Is not on the same level as the Tamar Chacham does have their Heretz, but he still has the qualities of Tamar Chacham. And Rabbi Cutler gives two answers. Distilled, they are as follows. Number one, Derech Eretz is a foundation for Torah. And if you don't have Torah, excuse me, and if you don't have Derech Eretz, it's not possible to have Torah. You can be a Tamar Chacham. You can know a lot of things, but you don't have Torah in the sense of being redeemed as a fine person. You're worse off than a novella, a, a carcass. Why? Because a carcass doesn't have potential. So a carcass can't be criticized for having failed in its potential. 
someone who fails in his potential is worse than someone who doesn't have potential at all. That's viewpoint number one. Viewpoint number two, says Ravar and Cutler, is that Derech Eretz reflects on the Torah. And if someone doesn't have Derech Eretz, then it could imply a failure in the Torah. Now, we understand that the failure is in the individual. It's not in the Torah. But human beings don't always respond that way. They make assumptions. It creates a bad impression. And we do care about impressions. Most of all, we care about their Heretz because it's the right thing to do. I'd like to just point out that we live at a time where there's a notable absence in some quarters in their Heretz, and specifically, I think, in online communication. One of the problems with online communication is that frequently it's anonymous. And because it's anonymous, people feel free to express themselves in ways that they wouldn't necessarily if their identities were associated with it. They have the luxury of expressing an opinion no matter how abhorrent, how offensive, how virulent, how baseless, how ridiculous, without taking responsibility. And we have an obligation as Jews, and Ravar and Cutler says that nowadays anybody who has learned any Torah is, for the purposes of this principle, a Tamachacham. So we have a responsibility to ourselves, to others, to the Torah, and to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to treat everyone with Derech Eretz, including when we are engaged in activities where Many, if not most people, are not conducting themselves likewise. Have a good Shabbos.